Hi, uh, my name is Joe Peppert, and I teach on the Today Oak program, Digital Strategy and Artificial Intelligence, the module one of Bled School of Management's Advanced Digital Transformation program. What I want to do over the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes is to kind of give you a, an overview of this program and also share with you some of the, the content that, that, that you can expect. Um, I also want you to leave with, uh, with one or two insights uh, from the program, sort of to give you a sense of what you can expect if you, if you do attend the program. And obviously, we look to develop these ideas over the, over the two days that the, that the program takes. But before I do, let me sort of give you a little bit of background uh, about myself. Um, I've been teaching at um, IEDC uh, for the last six years. Um, I teach on a number of the, the school's open programs. I also teach on the executive MBA program. And I also teach on, on some of the programs that they have developed for, for, for clients. I'm sort of currently on leave of absence from MIT's uh, Sloan School of Management. Um, and I've worked at ESMT in Berlin. I've worked at Cranfield School of Management, uh, Trinity College Dublin, the business, business school there. So, you know, my, my main area of sort of expertise and, and where I do the bulk of, of my research, uh, teaching and, and consulting is sort of helping organizations generate value from, from technology. And, you know, as you probably will know that this is a, an extremely broad challenge and, and actually includes obviously the, the building of, of strategy for, for technology, which is really the focus of, of this two day program. But it also uh, entails running programs and projects, uh, addressing the whole area of, of, of benefits realization. It encompasses also analytics, big data, managing IT enabled change, or as we like to call it today, digital transformation, portfolio management, dealing with complexity and, and technical debt, and, and also the implications of organization design for the success of digital transformation uh, initiatives. And, and one of the areas that I'm currently focusing on is IT and, and, and boards of directors, particularly some of the blind spots they're likely to encounter uh, with large transformation and replatforming uh, projects. You know, my, my, my research has been published um, in both practitioner journals and, and, and academic journals, and including, you know, Harvard Business Review, um, and, and also I've published uh, a number of books and my, my two most recent ones are, um, one is uh, building a digital strategy. Again, obviously the, the theme of this two day program and one that I published uh, last year uh, focuses on IT leadership, specifically on the role of the, uh, the chief information officer and how do you take the reins as a, as a, as a newly appointed um, CIO. I also sit on the board of a, of a number of tech companies and, and engage in a, in a number of consulting assignments each year for you know, a variety of companies, uh, essentially helping them unlock the digital, uh, digital dividend. And my most recent assignments have been in the areas of healthcare and, and uh, financial services. So if we come back to this particular two-day program, um, really I have a set two key, I should say three key objectives for the program. The first thing is I, I want to establish a frame of reference for what it takes to be successful with tech. Because I think if we don't have this frame of reference, I think the organization and the leadership team will, will, will struggle. Secondly, I want to give you a language because once we enter into the realms of, of digital, we, we encounter a whole new language so I want to you know, introduce you to, to that language. And then also over the two days, I will introduce a number of frameworks. Um, and really the purpose of these frameworks is to, is to fuel a conversation. You know, no framework is, is going to give you the answer, but what it will do is it will help you begin to think about the topic that you are considering in the context of your own organization and, and, and surface some of the different issues and challenges that you are likely to, to encounter. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's a management decision to choose which option uh, is the best for the particular situation at, uh, at, at hand. So with that, let me, let me maybe go and have a look at um, some of the, the, the kind of the content that I would hope to cover over the, over the two days. 
So let, let me start by sharing with you an outline of the, of the, of the two days. Um, and, and as you'd see in my design, I'm sort of focusing day one a little bit more on the digital technology um, aspect. And you'll see in day two, I focus more on the, on the transformation or, or challenges around uh, achieving the, the necessary change to deliver on the expected um, business outcomes uh, for, the, for, for the initiatives. So I will generally start off on the, on, on the first morning and uh, working with participants, helping them to make sense of, of, of digital and obviously particularly focusing in on, you know, how digital is, is, is changing strategy and, how, and changing the strategic options that are open to, uh, to organizations today. So we sort of address questions such as, you know, what is digital? You know, how does the company become digital? How does digital differ from um, IT, if, if indeed it does? Um, and, and, and also we will get into issues around transformation, agile, for example, we'll talk about scrum, et cetera, et cetera. The, the, the objective here is, is to give participants kind of a, a base from which we will then build on, on the remainder of the program. Um, typically in, in, in my design for this first morning, I will also have a, a breakout where, you know, participants will have the opportunity to discuss digital in their organization uh, with, with some of the colleagues on the, uh, on, on the program and to surface some of the issues and challenges because this will help us uh, when we work through the, the rest of the, uh, of the program. Following this, I will then explore digital business models. Um, and, and again, this is part of what I, what I will do here is, is to sort of give you at least the beginnings of a, of, of a framework uh, that you can use in your organizations to first of all, understand the, the, the business model choices um, that are, are available when we start thinking about digital and, and, and technology and, and, and data, um, as, as well as begin to give you the language um, that is associated with digital business models. So we'll talk about value chain, for example, versus ecosystem. I'll, I'll introduce concepts such, such as you know, modular producer, ecosystem driver, um, supplier, um, the omni-channel model. Um, and and to, to help us really get a, get a kind of a grip with this kind of the framework uh, that I will introduce and, and, and some of the language, I will use uh, a case study. Um, uh, typically, I, I, I use uh, either an example uh, of a, a Swiss a manufacturer uh, called Beaux Art, and they are a manufacturer of kind of these fasteners or screws. These, these are the typical kind of C items. If you're from manufacturing, you, you'll be familiar with that concept. These are kind of the low cost items. You know, maybe cost a uh, you know a few cent, but actually, if you don't have them. Um, you're really going to struggle to, to, to build your product. In fact, it'll be impossible to build your product. And what we look at in, in, the, in the context of Beaux-Arts is, is how their business model has evolved over, the, over their decade, decades. Uh, we look at their use of data. We look at the platform they've built. Um, and again, we sort of look at, at, at how they've shifted from selling products to moving more into, in, into solutions. They've introduced this, this concept of, of, of fast or smart factory logistics um, and, and intra organizational logistics. So I think it's really kind of a, a fascinating case of a, you know, essentially a, a medium sized company and how they have embraced the, uh, the digital opportunity to kind of reimagine their, their business model. Again, sometimes, and again, depending on the, the, the list of participants, I might use the, the Phillips case um, which again is a, is, 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 a, is, a, is a great example of a company that's really reinvented itself. And again, Philips, as you know, is, is kind of a big old company, a big old successful company. Um, and over the last you know, eight years under the leadership of CEO Franz Van Houten, you know, they have fundamentally reimagined uh, the, the company. They, they, they really now focus uh, on, on, on healthcare. They've shifted from selling products to, to selling solutions. And we look at some of the, the kind of the issues and challenges that this raises uh, for, for an organization, particularly for, for an incumbent organization and, and some of the internal transformations that were necessary for them to execute on, 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 on this new business model. I, I should emphasize that throughout the two days, I, I will draw on lots and lots of, uh, of examples coming from, 
from different organizations, from, from, from different industries, just to illustrate the, the points that, that, that I want to uh, raise and, and, and to really, I suppose, illuminate on, on, on maybe some of the frameworks and some of the models and indeed some of the language that, that I will introduce during the program. Again, typically I'll also have a breakout here. Um, and again, the idea here, you know, in, in the breakout is to give participants the opportunity to, to work with a framework that, that, that I've introduced, but also to contextualize it a little bit. Um, so for them to position their own organization's business model, maybe where it currently is and, and, and where they would like to move to, to uh, in, in the future. Uh, and begin to think about what are the capabilities they're going to have to build if they're to move, for example, from a more supplier model to a, an ecosystem driver, for example. Um, and, and also, what are some of the issues and, and challenges that they're, they're likely to face? I, I, after lunch, I, I, I typically then look at some of the sources of competitive advantage uh, from uh, uh, digital, from technology. And I'll also emphasize that actually, you know, we, we did talk a lot about competitive advantage from technology and still do, but actually in most industries today, technology is a competitive necessity. You know, you, particularly with COVID, for example, we all know that, you know, you cannot survive in business today without technology. So it is a competitive necessity. You know, I, I, I look at some of the, the drivers of, of, of competitive advantage um, you know, for example, infrastructure and the role that can play for, again, depending on your, your choice of business model. I'll also look at experience, you know, customer experience. And again, that depends on your choice of business model or indeed content. So trying to tease out where an organization's source of competitive advantage actually lies. And again, to help us, we have a little exercise that, that I have designed, which kind of gets us to think about, you know, possible business models, um, and the possible implications for choices in respect of competitive advantage um, and, and the implications thereof. Um, and then I will, I will finish the first day by, by focusing on the, the process of building a strategy for, for, for digital technology. So how do you actually go about uh, building the strategy? You know, what should a strategy contain? Who should be involved in, 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 in that process? And again, to help us really understand what is required, we, I'll use a, a case study of, of Allianz. Um, and I think it's a really great example of, of a company that's given significant thought into embracing digital technologies and building a strategy um, around their uh, digital ambitions. Um, there's no, uh, there is a, a written case, but there's no case preparation will be required. And we will look at some video uh, footage and video interviews uh, from the CEO and, and also from the, the head of technology at, the, at Allianz. Day two begins uh, by looking at, you know, the, the, the kind of the five core building blocks for, for, for digital transformation. I will explain the, the, the background to the, to the research that has surfaced these five building blocks, but essentially they're the operational backbone so these are your kind of your core systems, your, your, your systems of record, uh, for example, it might be your ERP system or your, your patient administration or your you know, EHR if you're in, in healthcare. Um, so we look at the role that your operational backbone plays in, 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 the, in the context of digital and your digital strategy. Uh, the second building block is your digital platform. And again, when we look at you know, companies that are really moving fast, what we see is that they have built a digital platform, which, which enables the, the kind of the rapid composition of digital offerings. Um, so again, the focus here is on, on, on reuse of, 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 of components. The, the third um, building block uh, are shared customer insights. Obviously, you know, we're increasingly looking to use data uh, both from our operational backbone, from our core system, the systems of record, but also uh, that's generated from our engagements with customers and other sources in, in order to generate insights, generate new knowledge about our customers, and particularly in relation to the digital offerings um, and their assessment, and do, you know, do they like what we're offering, do they not like what elements, would they be prepared to pay for, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the fourth um, building block is the accountability framework. Um, and when we talk about the accountability framework, what we're seeing here is, you know, again, in organizations that are looking to become kind of digital enterprises, they are shifting where accountability resides. So they're effectively, they are reimagining their, their organizational design. 
So, for example, if we look at a, a company like uh, Spotify, for example, and look at how they are organized for digital and how they are structured and, and where accountabilities reside, um, it's quite different than a traditional organization. So when we look at Spotify, we will encounter concepts like squads, tribes, chapters, uh, roles like you know, product managers, agile coaches. Um, and, we, and we'll also see that you know, they have shifted, um, you know, for example, you know, moving away from component owners, for example, product, project managers, uh, moving from missions uh, to, from structures. You know, they talk about metrics, not directives. They talk about experiments and not major launches. Um, you know, they have continuous release rather than major releases. You know, it's about collaboration, not hierarchy. It's, it's about trust, not, not control. So again, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a significant building block of a, of a digital um, enterprise, a significant building block of, of, of digital transformation. And then the, the final building block that we look at is the external developer platform. This is essentially enabling third parties to add additional value uh, to your uh, offerings to, to the customers. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit here about kind of APIs, for example, uh, and really how they enable uh, external parties to, to connect up to, to some of the, the, the services that you have uh, exposed to, uh, to, the, to the external world. I'll also then introduce a, a portfolio uh, to you know, help you manage your digital investments. And, and, and the basic proposition here is that not all investments in technology make the same contribution to the success of, of, of the organization. Um, and, and based on this premise, we look at the different management approaches to managing the different categories of investments that companies make in, in, in technology. And really to help you know, get to grips with this uh, framework in the context of your own organization, we will have a little uh, kind of break, breakout exercise, which, which kind of gives you the, the opportunity to apply some, some of the ideas in, in, in the context of your, your own particular business. The final afternoon really is focusing on, on um, digital transformation and particularly on, on leadership, because at the end of the day, you know, digital transformation is not really a tech issue. It's, it's really a leadership issue. So we, we look at the you know, leadership required to successfully deliver on, 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 on a digital strategy. Um, and again, I typically will use a case study here of, of this case of a bank, a DBS bank in Singapore which for me is probably the best example I've come across of, a, of an organization that has really managed to transform itself into what I could, would consider kind of a, a digital enterprise. Um, you know, they, but they've been at this now for the last 11 years. Um, so we'll have a look in detail at, at, at what they did, the challenges that they, that they faced. Um, and this will include some, some video interviews with some key protagonists in the DBS story. So the CEO, the head of technology, um, the chief innovation officer, and, and a couple of uh, people leading some of the, the, biz, the business areas. Um, and then the, the final session of the program will look at the, the different pathways to digital business transformation. So if you want to become a kind of a future ready organization, what are the paths that you can follow? Um, and, and essentially, from the research that we've done, there are four generic journeys. And what I want to do is to share these four journeys with you to describe them. I want to surface um, the challenges. So depending on which journey your organization might choose, it, it's, it's going to encounter particular challenges. You know, what are the implications of those challenges and, and how might you overcome some of those challenges? Um, and then we will finish off the, the two days by trying to pull out some of the some of the, some of the, the key the key takeaways. So that's just a kind of a quick run through the um, the, the, the program to kind of to give you a sense of it, the structure, a sense of the the, the, con the content, and also a sense of the didactics uh, that you can expect uh, if you were to attend the, uh, the the program. Let me just kind of maybe give you one, one, one or two takeaways from, from, from the program. And, and, and one key message that I'm continually emphasizing uh, throughout the two days is that, you know, despite the tremendous advances in technology that we've seen over the last 50 years, 
despite the role that technology plays in digital transformation. You know, digital is not a technology revolution. I argue very, very strongly that digital is an information revolution. Um, of course, we need technology, absolutely. But, but the technology provides the capability, yeah? And the challenge for organizations, and this is the, the challenge of building a digital strategy, the challenge for organizations is to harness and to figure out you know, how it's going to use these particular capabilities. And, and the capabilities of technology are, are pretty limited. They are limited to you know, collecting data, transmitting data, uh, manipulating data, uh, storing data and presenting it. Five capabilities. But using just these five capabilities, we are only limited by our ingenuity. So when I think of digital, I show that it actually has an I and an IT. It is about information, uh, but also technology is, is required. Um, and again, one of the shifts that we've seen over the last, particularly over the last decade, is increasingly that technology capability is moving off premise. You know, you, you probably have come across the notion of cloud computing. So more and more of the, you know, computing power, that, that IT capability is being consumed from, 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 within the, from within the cloud. At the end of the day, it's how the organization chooses to harness information using the capabilities of technology. And again, just to maybe help you remember this, I'm, I'm, I'm actually Irish, and some of you may or may not know that the, you know, the, the shamrock is the, uh, the emblem of Ireland. And it, uh, you know, mythology has it that uh, St. Patrick, he was the patron saint of Ireland, you know, he actually used it to explain the kind of the, the holy trinity uh, in, in religion to, you know, the, the Irish Christians. And what he did was he, he used the leaf uh, to represent the, the Father, the Son and, and the Holy Spirit. And, and sort of the, the, the tree leaves, the shamrock are, are also said to stand for sort of faith, hope and love. So maybe keep this in mind, the shamrock in mind, when you think about a digital, we have the information and, and the technology, um, but also it's the use. Um, so there's the data, the information, the tech and the use. Um, so what use are we going to put tech to? What use are we going to put data? to in our organization. And, the, and this really is the, is, is, you know, is, is, is the strategic challenge. This is setting the, the strategic agenda. Um, and again, sticking with this theme of, of, of information, um, you know, a lot of the, the problems that organizations face, uh, both operationally and strategically, you know, can be framed as information problems. Um, think about parking your car. You know, have you ever seen this as, a, as an information problem? Some of you might do it multiple times a day, but actually it is an information problem. Um, and it's also a big problem in relation to congestion and, and climate change, for example. You know, we look at a city like Los Angeles, it's estimated that about 25 to 30% of the traffic is due to drivers driving around looking for vacant car parking spaces. Now, what's the information problem here? Well, the information problem is that the vacant car parking spaces, you know, don't know where the drivers are, where the cars are that are looking to park. And similarly, the drivers driving around don't know where the vacant, vacant car parking spaces are. And of course, now with your, you know, your, your, your digital hat on, you can sort of think about, well, there's technology capability out there today, sensors, for example, that maybe we could put a sensor um, somewhere in, in the car parking space, connect it uh, to the cloud, build an app, um, you know, make that app available to drivers, et cetera, et cetera. You can sort of see, see where I'm going here. So by reframing the problem, seeing it as an information problem, potentially technology can provide a, a solution. And actually, I know from my work with, with startups, for example, that a lot of founders see, you know, a lot of the, you know, traditional problems in, in organizations and industries through the lens of information. And that's why they come up with new business models, uh, for example, uh, something that maybe incumbents struggle to see. And this is where this notion of innovation comes in. Yeah. So it's kind of looking at what are the capabilities of technology, maybe seeing the, the problem or the issue uh, or the challenge the organization faces or the, the opportunity through the lens of information and seeing is, is there technology that's provides some capability that we could potentially harness that would help us address the problem or, or, or come up with a 
potentially new customer um, offering. So, so when again sticking with this digital, so digital has a, has a you know a technology component. It's got an information and systems component, and again. As part of the language of digital, you know, during the program, I'll introduce you to supply and demand. So on the supply side, we have technology, and on the demand side, we have the information and systems. Um, and indeed, when we are building our digital strategy, essentially what we're doing is we are looking at the supply capabilities, and we are looking at marrying technology capabilities with business opportunities. That's essentially what we're doing. We're mapping um, supply and, 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 and demand. Sometimes technology provides opportunities to do things that is not possible without technology. And, and similarly, we might have a business problem that yes, maybe a, a glitch in our supply chain, for example, that technology can, can, can help, us, um, help, help us solve. So on the, on the supply side, we've got lots of technologies. Um, everything from cloud analytics, the internet of things, you know, blockchain, robotics, cognitive computing, Artificial intelligence is obviously one of, of these technologies and, and obviously um, is something that we will look at um, during the, the, the programs. But, but again, this, uh, these technologies are providing capability. Um, you know, technology itself has got no inherent value. Just because you buy technology doesn't automatically mean now that all the value that you expected from having purchased that technology will now be delivered. Uh, you've got to unlock that value. Um, and on your demand side, we've got to figure out, you know, how are we going to harness the, the capabilities that are, are uh, afforded by technology, either operationally, um, you know, to do what we need to do to, to run our business more efficiently, more, more, more effectively, reduce cost, uh, increase cycle times, for example, or strategically uh, in terms of new value propositions for customers, new ways of, of engaging uh, with customers, um, and on new ways of, of competing um, in the uh, industry or indeed the, the, the wider ecosystem. So that's, so that's the kind of the essence, I suppose, of the, of the program itself. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's matching the capabilities of technology with, with business opportunities and building a, a, a strategy for, for, for that. So in, in, you know, in, in today's digital world, we know that you know, the world's most valuable resource is, not, is no longer oil, it's data. Um, it's information, uh, but the challenge for an organization is to build a strategy uh, for that information, for that data. And that's the essence of this program. Um, so by the end of the two days, I would hope uh, that participants will be in the position to start to think strategically about some of the issues and challenges, but also begin to think strategically about the, the, the opportunities and what it is that they will need to do uh, in order to leverage the capabilities of, of, um, of, of technology. And as you can imagine, this is an, an ongoing process. Um, you know, once you build a strategy for your digital, um, you know, it's not a case that you can rest on your laurels because there's a continuous stream of, of, of new innovations coming about new technology capability. Um, and it's as if you are on a, on a, um, a roller coaster um, or a treadmill. I, you've just got to even walk faster just to, just to stay still. Hopefully I will maybe see some of you on, on, on the program uh, in the future, um, but I hope you, I, at least you've give, been given some uh, you know, food for thought in relation to your own um, digital ambitions. Thank you very much.